Hello everyone. Uh, after a long gap, I'm making this video because I got busy moving our office to a new location. And if you are in Melbourne, for your information, now we have relocated to a better and larger place, which has a capacity of more than 100 students at any time. And we have the state of the art lab where you can stay in practice for the whole day in the presence of tutors who can tell you what you're doing uh, is right or not. Anyway, for this video, as I told you in the previous video, I'll be talking about pitch something that is poorly understood by many of us but can have a really important impact on our score unfortunately i would say in this video i'm going to talk about different factors related to pitch which can affect your score in your speaking and i will start by talking about how speech to text technology works then after that i'll talk about um, the loudness in voice and why it is not important in the exam Followed by that, we'll talk about intelligibility. That means the understandability of your voice and what can affect understandability of your voice, thereby affecting your score. And then we'll talk about the differences between male and female voice, how they differ in terms of frequency. And at the end, I'll talk about how the headset that we use in the exam detect our voice and what frequency range it can pick. And at the end, I will tell you a few tips to improve your pitch, especially if you are losing a score because of your pronunciation and pitch problem. If you are interested, keep watching. If you are new to this channel, my name is Roman. I am principal of Roman PT. We provide face-to-face -face and online classes to people all over the world. If you are interested in our services, please visit the website given in the description or on the screen and we will be able to help you to get the score you desire in a very short time. So let's start by talking about how Pearson's speech analysis software which is called Versant works. Versant is dependent on speech to text analysis. This speech to text analysis is important because they have to convert the analog signal produced by your speech into digital signal in order to be evaluated by the computer in order to be analyzed and interpreted by the computer. Unless they do that they cannot apply the other two technologies they use while assessing your answer. Pearson uses natural language processing and Latin semantic analysis to find out whether your answer is relevant to the question or not and whether you should be given a score for your answer or not. But in order to apply those two technologies, they have to first convert your answer into text. And if this part is not done correctly, no matter how well you speak, you will not get the points. It's as simple as that. So how this speech-to-text technology works? So what happens in speech-to-text is you say something which is picked up by the computer. That means the analog signal produced by your voice is picked up by the computer that needs to be converted into the digital signal. So uh, while doing that, the software converts your voice into S-T-U-H-F-F. Now, this is a technical pattern. We don't really need to know what it means, but this is how our signal is converted into uh, the digital signal. And then software language model analyzes that and tries to find out what you said. Uh, so it compares your voice with the voices in the database or the, you can say, the information in the database, and they try to predict what you said. And because this model relies a lot on heuristic analysis, that means a lot of data that they can't get from your voice, they have to uh, guess to correctly identify what you said, sometimes it doesn't work. And there can be many reasons. So what I did was I went through a lot of research articles where they were discussing how speech-to-text technology works and what can affect its accuracy. Because uh, from my experience, what I have found is people who tend to have high pitch, that means people who tend to have thin voice, get lower score in pronunciation despite being able to speak quite clearly and without a problem. So I wanted to find out if there was anything about this in the research articles so that I could find out why it happens and how we could avoid it. And based on all of these things, what I found is basically it's because of your frequency that the intelligibility of your voice is affected. So how does that happen? So I wanted to find out what factors could affect the clarity of your voice, even if you are speaking clearly and human ear can easily recognize your voice or understand what you're saying. Why computers struggle to understand you and give you a score of 10, for example? And I went in depth to understand how these things work. I have uh, heard from my students that uh, many times when people get low score, they are advised by the tutors to speak louder. Now, let me tell you one thing. Speaking loudly without focusing on clarity is not going to change your score at all. And there is a scientific reason behind it. 
That reason is, if you look at the diagram on the screen right now, this is a basic structure of a microphone. The microphone has a diaphragm uh, at the tip, which is connected to the magnetic coil, and from there, the wire goes inside, um, which collects your data. Now, if you speak really loud, this diaphragm vibrates, and this produces a change in a magnetic and electric field, which is picked up by the, the conductor. On the screen, you can right now see a basic illustration of a microphone, and you can see that basically microphone picks up the vibration created by the sound and converts that into electric and magnetic signal, which are interpreted by the um, appropriate software. I'm not a sound engineer, so I don't really understand in depth how this thing works, but from this and based on the papers I read, what I have found is when we speak, we use vowels and consonants, and we have got 44 different sounds in English. Now, if you really think about vowels and consonants, one thing that you can perhaps notice is you can speak the vowels louder, but no matter how hard you try, you cannot increase the loudness of consonant. Let me demonstrate that for you. When I say E, I can go as loud as I can, but T, this is a consonant. I can say, no matter how hard I try, I can't say T louder. So that means I cannot pronounce consonants louder, only vowels loudness can be increased. Now, when we think about the intelligibility of a language, then we need to think about another thing. That is, there are two different types of languages in the world based on the tone. They are called tonal languages and non-tonal languages. English is a tonal language. That means in this language, your tone can determine how clear your voice is. Now, as I have already shown you, vowels can be spoken louder, but consonants cannot be. And in English, all the vowels and consonants both are important for production of the sound. Consonants actually are more important for clarity. Now, I've told you that consonants cannot be spoken louder no matter how hard you try. And what that means is loudness is not going to change your clarity. Because when you're speaking louder, you're only pronouncing vowels louder. Consonants cannot be pronounced louder. And only consonants determine clarity. So the advice you are getting is that if you speak loud, you will be more clear and the software will pick up your voice is simply not true. Clarity cannot be affected by loudness. Yes, you should speak louder so that the microphone can pick up enough of your voice so that your voice does not get muddled in the background noise. But just by increasing the loudness, you cannot improve your clarity. So if you are just relying on this simple strategy of speaking louder to get more score, it's not going to work. It will just be a coincidence. Sometimes you'll get this score and sometimes you'll not. So it's not a reliable tip. Okay, if that is the case, then what is the important thing regarding intelligibility? Now, human voice has a range of frequency, but most of them are between 125 to 8 kilohertz. So kilohertz is the unit we use for measuring the frequency. And most of the human frequency while we are speaking is between 1000 to 4000 kilohertz. And if we have voice, which is in this range, most of our voice has frequency range of this. This is called mid-range frequency. If this is better, if frequency is higher in this particular range, then our voice sounds clearer. If our voice is on the lower side, then we our voice sounds muddled. And if our voice is on the higher side, then there are some... Um, interesting problems called sibilance, but let's not discuss about that because that will be beyond the discussion scope of this particular video. So our target should be to have clarity in the range of 1000 to 4000. Now, if we compare the male and female voice, then what we all know is female voice has a thin characteristic and male voice has a thick characteristics are in a more understandable term, what we can say is females usually have higher pitch and males usually have lower pitch. The reason for that is males usually have frequency range on the lower side and females usually have the frequency range on the higher side. For human ear, that is not a problem because we have a really good range to pick up the sound. The problem is the headphone that you get in the exam. The headphone that you get in the exam has better sensitivity in the range of around 1000. Now, if we look at the frequency diagram that I shown you in the previous slide of this video, uh, then perhaps you could note that male voice, most of the frequency range of male voice or the highest peak of male voice coincides with around 800 to 1000 kilohertz. In case of female, that's all more than 1000. Because of that, females with higher pitch tend to have loudness in the higher side and males on the lower side.
because of that males usually do not have problem but females have problem and this is what we call pitch so we have come a long way to explain what pitch actually is and how it can affect the clarity of our voice or why we can have problem because of the pitch so let me tell you that one more time but in a simple way females usually have voice with frequency on the higher side males usually have voice with a frequency on the lower side the headphone that we use in the exam have microphones which pick up the frequency range of the males more correctly than frequency range of the female because they have higher sensitivity towards the male frequency pattern than the female frequency pattern because of this the clarity of female voice with high pitch and even male voice with high pitch can be low and you might lose a score because of that which is unfair from my side but there is nothing we can do about it and many times i've seen this but the interesting thing is i've also seen people's score jumping from let's say 30 one day to 90 after two days now we all know that our skill cannot change that much in two or three days so how was i able to do this i did a few simple things the first thing i did was pitch correction now why we produce such a uh, high frequency sound why females produce such a high frequency sound so production of sound and its frequency actually depends on vocal cords so if you have not watched my video about how the pronunciation how we pronounce sound then i suggest that you watch my previous video where i have shown you how vocal cords help in producing the sound so one thing that happens is vocal cords are actually uh, tagged by the muscles on either side and if these muscles are tense then that produces a high pitch sound so for example let's say i i sit like this really stressed and if i try to speak the voice that i produce is high pitch but imagine your voice when you have just woke up in the morning that sounds a lot relaxed and that's low pitch so that means when the muscles are relaxed voice becomes lower in pitch when the muscles are tense voice becomes high in pitch a very good example of that is if i put my finger here now you can see that my voice pitch has dropped because while when i do this it slackens the vocal cords and it makes them relax and because of that the sound becomes lower in pitch now of course you cannot do this the entire time in the exam although i have asked some of my students to do this and they were able to get this score because they didn't have much time to practice the pitch before the exam for you those of you who have time to practice the pitch i suggest three important exercises first is try abdominal breathing when we are producing sound we tend to produce sound more from the chest but there is a small piece of organ we have called diaphragm that suppress this chest from the abdomen and if you try to produce the sound from the diaphragm that means if you try to produce the sound from deep within then it lowers the pitch second is when you are sitting on the chair try to stay relaxed for example like this now you can see that immediately my voice pitch has dropped a little bit because i'm a little more relaxed than i was before So while you're speaking try to be relaxed and don't try to be too stressed. For example when people try to speak really fast they become tense and because of that tension their pitch goes up and again they lose points. So speaking louder or speaking faster can actually have negative impact on the clarity of your voice. And third thing is be controlled and consistent in your pace. Don't try to speak too fast sometimes and too slow sometimes, too loud sometimes and too low sometimes because that creates a difficulty for the computer to find your average pitch. because for the background noise separation it's really important that they find your average loudness and then based on that separate the background noise from your voice so these are some of the things i know this video has been really really technical and perhaps too difficult to understand for some of us and i can understand that but there was very little i could do about it and uh, if you are in melbourne and if you happen to be in our class and i these things do not make sense to you please come to me and ask me these questions i would be more than happy to explain these things to you one more time and i can also tell you whether your pitch is correct or not for your exams and tell you how you can change it and if you are not in melbourne you still have the options for joining our online classes where we can do the same thing for you as we can do for our face to face students and if both of these things are not possible write in the comments because i will still have a look at the comments and tell you what you can do to work on your pitch and improve your score in pronunciation if you like the video please hit the like button and share it with your friends and if you don't want to miss other videos like this in future please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon until my next video have a good time and all the best for your exam